Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO at DVS, and today I'm joined by a really good friend, Marco from Sensor Security, all the way from South Africa. Say hello, Marco. Hello. Uh, kindly dropped in after your visit to, where did you go last week? Milan, Italy, Sicurezza. Ah, some of you have the best jobs, huh? Yeah. Some of us can't get out of Cardiff and some of you get to go to Italy. So today's focus, we're going to take a look at this lovely new machine. This is the X-Series uh, hybrid uh, deep in mind recorder, so it's perimeter protection or facial recognition. For today's demonstration, we're going to install it and set it up for the facial recognition algorithm. Um, like I say, it is brand new, so if you want to take it out of the box and uh, show the lovely viewers and listeners what we're looking at. Okay, in the professional way in that I know how to do it. Way, yeah. In the professional way that doesn't fall on the floor and smashes yeah, the pieces. I think we just turn okay, the box Tim, upside down. That's exactly well done. Look alive, I'm learning every go. day. Learning every day. We could get rid of this lovely uh, eco-friendly foam in that hopefully high vision will sort out very soon. Yeah, it's a job creation. Exactly that. And the lovely pink paper you'd like to keep as well? Exactly. Or... Oh, we'd love to keep that. That's the... We love, love pink paper. So we'll decorate our PTZ with some pink paper because it is nearly Christmas. And... So with this unit, you can see on the front of the unit, it's a bit of a redesign. It follows the unreleased AccuSense NVR. So if I just show you on the front there, we've got like the touchscreen version, oh, which is brilliant. like the AccuSense version we've got installed there, which is currently unreleased in the UK. But you can see there's a lovely new design. If we swing it round so you can see the rear of the unit, guys, you've got your PoE ports there. And my lovely oh, glamorous assistant. I couldn't ask for a better glamorous assistant than this. Um, we've got two HDMI ports, alarm inputs, outputs, standard connections, video BNC, VJ, LAN port, USB, et cetera, et cetera. Power supply on the right hand side of the unit here. So what we're going to do is I've already installed, if I turn it this way up, yeah, I've already put two hard drives in there in preparation because uh, preparation is everything in this industry. We're going to go and set this up over there. We're going to add our faces to the facial recognition library using a standard camera and a camera dedicated to facial recognition so we can see if there's any difference in the performance. Great. So join us shortly where we will be over in the corner looking at to see if we can recognize ourselves. I'll see you in a minute, guys. Awesome. Okay, guys, welcome back. So it's been a while, but we've refitted the uh, facial recognition MVR. Thanks to Marco for helping me refit it because I'm awesome. a bit of a, a dummy when it comes to stuff like this. So I have to be shown how to do that. So thank you. Big thumbs up. What you'll see on the screen now is two cameras, one facial recognition seven line camera that's optimized for facial recognition Great. and a second seven line Q management camera. I've added both. They've both been added to the facial comparison list. Mm -hmm. We've got a standard iPhone X, yep, I am that rich, I can't afford an iPhone X, um, which we're gonna do some push notifications to. Firstly though, as you can see, if we walk past the camera, if I go first, it'll detect, but on the left-hand side, it'll say mm -hmm. unknown. We don't have any, any, we don't have ourselves added to any list yet, as you can see, it's just picking us up. Marco's walking around, um, but we don't actually have any um, added to a list. So. What we're going to do, firstly, we're going to go into Smart Analysis. Mm -hmm. Under Smart Search, well, under the fa face picture database, we've got Strangers, VIP, and Blacklist. We've got uh, Blacklist, which I'm going to go in. Yep. So my ugly mug's going in the Blacklist. So if I come on site, I'm going to be evicted. Marco's going to go in the VIP list. He's a VIP here at DVS, always welcome. So as soon as Marco comes into the building, we're going to run over and give him the, the golden handshake and, and anything he wants. Yeah and uh, really look after him. So best way to do this, because we, we can either import a picture, so you can give us a picture, USB stick, import it and put it into the list, or we can simply go to Smart Search, under Face Search, search by event, and just look at all the captured pictures today. Oh, wow. So there we go, there's me, that's a, one that I'm smiling, so you can show my wife I actually do smile from time to time, so that's <laughs> nice. So add the face database, I'm gonna go in the blacklist. My name is Ditech. So that, that'll come up as me on the list and my phone number is 000. I know many of you would love to put my real phone number in there. It's not gonna happen. And click OK. So we'll look for a nice one of Marco now. So if we scroll down, go through the pages. Let's look for, uh, still not a nice one. Oh, that's a lovely one oh, there. Wow. Oh, no, no, let's, look, let's use this model. A uh, lovely uh, L'Oreal hair advert one there with that beautiful hair. So add How the face know? database, I can look at it, lovely, I'm jealous, very jealous, look at that. Add the face database, you're going to go in as a VIP, and you're going to go in as Marco the Great. Mm, what about? No, no, yeah, look, I can't even spell, so. Yeah. 
Let, let me uh, must do, have been an autocorrect. Let me do you justice and give you. Oh look, I can't even spell ver. At least get your name right, huh? Mark of the Great. There we yeah, go. Looks Phone right. number nine nine nine. Click OK. So under our lists now, face picture, the face picture database. You're in the VIP. I can click right. on you and I can change you to sex for male and OK that. And the blacklist, I can click on me and I can put myself as a male. Last time I checked, they definitely was a male. All this is going to do is yep. enable us. If we wanted to, if we had a big list of people, we can actually um, narrow it down to search for males only, which That's I am, um, or females or unknown. You don't have to put the sex in there. Yep. And the camera isn't telling us the sex of the person. This is just to narrow the search field down um, within. If you've got a big list of thousands of people in there, just give yep. you that little uh, search advantage. So next thing is under the events, so go to system, under event and smart event. We've got the first camera. Um, which is the face recognition camera under face picture capture. We've enabled facial picture comparison for Great. the VIP list and the blacklist. Both lists is going to look across to see if you exist in either list. Great. Edit the similarity, 80% similar or more on both lists, but you can adjust that you know, accordingly. So Our mid schedule sure. is 24 seven because we want this to work all the time, not just um, sometimes. Yeah. And the linkage action, we're going to put full screen monitoring, audible warning, notify surveillance center, which is going to be the push notification function to the phone. Yeah. Um, you can send email outputs, trigger channels, etc. You can actually choose which list this resides on. We're going to look for both lists, yeah. um, but you can have the camera dedicated to one list specifically if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Armage schedule, linkage succeeded, linkage failed. And for exactly the linkage failed is if it doesn't uh, you know, compare you to a face and what does it do? Because it could send an alarm out by email again, push notification. So succeed or fail on that. Okay. So we're going to go for the succeed only. So we only get the ones that match you and send Correct. to us. Same with the second camera and the linkage action for face capture. We put the two lists in, go away and welcome is the uh, comparison failed or succeeded 24 seven. And again, full screen monitor, audible warning, notify surveillance center with the appropriate camera, that's number two. And again, we don't do anything for linkage fail. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Back to the live view interface. So on the left hand side, we've enabled it to show the facial detection. Good. So if you walk in front of the camera first, so we get to see your beautiful face. So straight away is a side chart and it didn't recognize you. And now it has started to recognize you as you walk past the camera. So if we click right. at the second and first event, so again, 95%. So out of interest, 95%, if I click on that event, so a side shot of you walking past, side profile, it's still saying it's 95% sure that it's you, Marco the Great, with the attached video. And that is from the dedicated Q management camera. So it's not really fine-tuned for facial capture. So I'm really, really pleased with that. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Second one down is 100%. So if I click that one, again, that's your database image and that's the capture one. 100% sure off the facial recognition camera that you are that person. So the algorithm and hardware this, within this um, NVR and camera are just cutting edge, fantastic. We're at that you know, cusp of the latest technology breakthroughs, 100% on facial recognition match. You, know, you wouldn't have seen that two years ago. Right. Um, again, as you go down the list, you'd see that will increase and decrease depending on angles, lighting, uh, distance, etc. What you will see, for the um, guys watching at home. On my phone, I've got some events. So if I open up the face compare alarm on Hike Connect, oh, great. it's absolutely wonderful for function, so I won't show you my password. Um, in fact, I don't even know my password because I got it wrong. There we go. So as you can see there, straight away, oh, it's right loaded my, in, in, the actual snapshot of you there. So the viewers at home can see, Marco is saying right. time of capture, Marco the great, 100% similarity. Uh, time and date, where it was captured from. So straight away, I'm a guard or someone looking after Marco can rush to and tend to every one of his needs. I can even press the playback button. So as you can see there, that's now playing back the capture event. So for you guys at home, you can see on there. And for you there, you can see that's where you got captured on there. Absolutely fantastic function. I can see that being so powerful in the retail mm. or the security world Absolutely. or even the VIP world, as we just mentioned. So what we'll do now is just go back and close that off because we finished looking at your lovely face. Now so I've got, I've got captured and immortalized forever. Yeah. So if I go through there myself, so I'm in oh, the blacklist. Yeah. So Ditech, I go past the camera, the casually walking past with my swagger. 
so it should eventually pick me up. There we go. The face rack terminal will pick me up as I walk past as well on the side, which is interesting. So again, saying die tech on this one. Uh, that was a back head shot. It still captured me as a human face. Click on that. So 99% sure that my database smiley shot is equivalent to the picture of me walking past the camera with the video. And again, um, it's pushed it through as an alarm through to Hike Connect. So I can open that. I cleared it down. But I could open that. That would show me into the store. If I'm a security guard in the blacklist, I can then go and run and get that person off my property, perhaps. Or again, treat them with respect. Yeah. Um, really easy functionality. So on the left hand side, it's going to show us that uh, live view interface. Uh, so you continue being alerted to it or to your phone or to the mm -hmm. software if you're using the, uh, the VMS side of it. If you want to go and search for faces that have been on the property, under Smart Analysis, we make this really, really easy. Under Smart Search, uh, you can click on Search by Picture. I can either upload sample from local, which means I can you can give me a picture on a USB stick Great. and say, can you check if this person has been on your property? I can input that picture. Um, search my camera database, the cameras awesome. are um, set up for facial uh, recognition on the system and that will see if that person has been on my property, you know, in, in, compa in similarity comparison. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they're stored in the database, you know, you haven't assigned them to any sort of facial recognition databases as such, yeah. but it's retrospectively searching through the footage while it still exists on the hard drive. Yeah. Again, really, really powerful function. Or if I want to see how many times you come into the um, property because you are on my list, I can upload sample from the database and the VIP, select you, click OK, select my time and date range and what cameras, so I'll just leave it as default. And now you can see all of the different captures of yourself. There's a lot in there. So I can put them in list format, but I like to put them in there so we can see you. Again, anyone I click on will show you the capture and the video to go with it. And you can export any number of these to a USB stick and use them as evidence purposes if you need. Again. It's saying there's 75 captures and seven pages. So I can literally go page after page of these captures. They're really, really high percentages. Even that one, for instance, where you're looking up at uh, heavens, where Jacob's yeah. got his hands in his pocket. He's in awe of us doing our video. You know, why wouldn't you be? There's two, two, uh, two uh, giants of the industry in here. Um, Jake's in awe of us. Uh, and Marco's looking up and thanking God that he found DVS. <laughs> and he's in our property. So there we go. Little prayer. Um, that's about really all I wanted to sort of run through with you guys. I'll go back to the live view interface, so it's back to the thing. Um, from my side, you know, the industry, the technology is using the latest AI technology, latest hardware, latest, you know, end-to-end -end solutions becoming really, really powerful. Yeah. From your side, that's sort of coming from South Africa, you know, what, what's, what's your input? Any feedback about facial recognition uses? Well, yeah, what I love about this is the whole business intelligence side, yeah. because I'm able to now discover certain people that are critical to a business yes. and get immediate notification yes. through to a phone over here for yep. people to react to. Yeah. And when I'm looking after people at a conference, in a retail environment, as you were saying, yep. I want that information to be able to react to people. That's, that's absolutely fantastic feedback. So like, you know, wherever there's retail conferences, you know, public spaces uh, like stadiums, yep. events, all of these uh, colleges, hospitals, all of these places that you don't need this added protection or security, we can sort of provide that through this machine. I say very, very powerful machine. What we've also got is the little smiley facial recognition face, which leads mm -hmm. on to your check-in with the conferences. If yeah. I click on that, um, what we can do is put it as a three by three. Um, we've got two people, so die tech, uh, camera check-in. So we can actually leave it on the two lists, uh, VIP or blacklist there. So what I can do now is walk in front of the camera yeah. and it should actually show me walk uh, up on the screen in a minute. As you can see, oh, the facial recognition. Oh, so as you can see there, this dedicated interface will show us now, um, me, I'm in a blacklist. So as I walk through it, you're a VIP. So you need to be treated uh, with utmost respect. And uh, if you're yeah. uh, in a Gucci shop or Louis Vuitton, send me samples, no problem. Um, you know, they're going to run over to you and really, really take care of you. Yeah. I've come up as being in a blacklist. They're going to do something very opposite and remove me from the site, you know, which is yes. exactly what we expect. Yeah. Um, so this dedicated uh, check-in terminal really does help if you're a security guard on a pedestal, you know, monitoring traffic through the uh, flow past the camera. You've got a dedicated screen now where you can start getting some more details. It also gives us a search function so we can search for any of these records, mm. uh, tendencies like check in, check out times awesome. as well. So it's a really, really powerful function. Uh, some people use it, some people don't, but just to let you guys know it is there if you need it. So we'll exit that now. 
And um, what I want to do before you go there is yeah. just quickly grab you and say thank you for coming in. So we had some DVS oh. beer made. So you guys on the video can be really jealous. This is some dedicated DVS uh, beer. So we're going to give you that so you can drink that Brilliant. in the hotel room tonight and get as merry as you like. Thank um, you. Other than that, really, all it remains to say is thank you so much for coming into DVS. I know we've met before at Essex, so, you know, you coming in to South Wales is not only a pleasure for me, it's an absolute honour to be able to host you here. I know you came in yesterday and saw the guys, they yeah. gave you a tour around. So, yeah. and you guys back home in South Africa, if you're using Hike Vision, which you should be, you need to use these guys, get in touch with these guys, Sensor Security, they really will look after you. They're like the DVS of South Africa. They've got the customer's interest at heart, just like we have, and they've got brilliant marketing videos and... Marco is just as good as I am technically. So get in touch. They'll sort you out and keep you happy. Other than that, hopefully next time we do a video, I can come to South Africa and you can repay me the favour. Awesome. And, uh, we'll have the beers. We'll have the beers over there and, yeah. uh, and a barbecue. And other than that, thank yeah, you so much. Brilliant. And see, stay day. safe. Yeah. Safe travels home and see you soon. Yeah. Cheers. You can take this now. You can take it now, yeah. <laughs> okay, and welcome. So I've done the main bit with the unboxing, installing, and then the use of it on the local GUI. I'm just going to run through the web browser functionality. So we did that bit with Marco. Marco didn't need to be here for this bit, so this bit is filmed. For those of you who are clever enough in the scene, this bit has been filmed after. So I've web browsed into the recorder. You can clearly see there what the model number of this recorder is. It's the new X model, so it's the hybrid model for face recognition and perimeter alarm. And currently, we are on the latest firmware. So as you're watching this, if there is a later firmware, please update it. I'm sure there will be um, at some point, but this is the latest firmware as it stands today. Outside of this, pretty much standard functionality. Um, I don't got, need, need to go through too much of the menus here, but because it's the um, facial, recon, facial recognition engine or perimeter alarm, you can see under engine configuration, you can actually change the status of what that is, uh, face record perimeter protection, what it's set up to do currently, and then face grading if you're doing that. I don't turn face grading on, but you can actually turn face grading on and do pupil distance, elevation, and pan, an pan angle if you're getting any issues out with the box. For now, we're going to leave it default. My cameras are working really well. Again, we've shown you this sending the alarm through to High Connect, which is a massive bonus. The only things I would say underneath really here outside of this, let's just have a quick look. So under event, under face comparison, you can actually set all of the parameters up, not only through the lo local GUI, but through the web browser now. So we can pick our facial recognition camera. You can enable non real time facial comparison if you want. We're gonna leave that disabled. We're doing it live real time. So we've got uh, face comparison or stranger detection. I've disabled stranger detection. That's if the face isn't in the library, then you would be alarmed. So probably really good for high security areas. If you've got a list and it doesn't recognize that uh, face in the list, then it's going to alarm you. The position in the camera is quite critical. Otherwise, if somebody walks across it and it gets a side shot and it doesn't recognize them, you're going to get a lot of stranger detection alarms. But there is definitely a time and a place to deploy that. But under facial comparison, we've got the prompt for facial comparison um, failed or succeeded. You can do the alarm output pulse. So you've got your arm in schedule and then linkage method for facial matched. And we've notified surveillance center for face mismatched. Again, notify surveillance center. And then which libraries are you going to work across and what is the uh, percentage match that you want to work to? So we've set that up on the local GUI, but you can obviously do that on the web browser as well. If you choose, you can do it all from one place. Now, people frequency alarm. Um, this is two options, frequently appeared person or low frequency person. So that we, I've set myself, so I've enabled it. I put a capture interval for one minute, frequency threshold for two times, and statistic cycle for seven days. So basically, if it sees me more than twice in within a one minute period across these two cameras, which I've selected, across the two libraries I've selected, and the arm in schedule and what it does on notify surveillance center so if, if it meets all of that criteria it's going to send me an alarm to say it's seen me more than the parameters have been set to allow so say you're somebody who shouldn't be in the area and they've come in you know more times than they should for whatever reason then it'll give you an alarm again if you're expecting a certain person to be seen frequently 
um, and they're not seen frequently, then you can set the statistics up and the alarm um, for the reverse. So I've set it up just for myself. There's only me in the building across all the lists. So we'll see that working. Other than that, it's pretty much all set up. The face picture libraries, again, if I put that, we've got Marco in the VIP list and me in the black list. That's all I've got actually in the um, libraries at the minute. And the picture, you can actually search for any of these files. So if I just go uh, all types today, So lots and lots of files in there. And that's me looking at the camera. So you can also search for all the pictures within the web browser picture um, web men access menu. What we can also do, those of you who haven't noticed, there's a new display alarm icon on the sort of web browser. What this allows you to do, I've already pulled it up. It brings up a separate web menu. You can add up to four cameras in here. So under you can have a, a single camera or four cameras. You choose them from the list on the left hand side. What this actually does show you then is it work in live for face recognition and people frequency. So you get your match on the right hand side and the captured pictures on the bottom time bar. So again, this is Internet Explorer, so it is a little bit slow. But if I go and get recognized within the image, Oh, I'm so handsome. Okay, so there's uh, one there. So we got a 98% match on that. So if I click on it, it brings up the reference database shot plus the capture uh, image that was back from there. So it allows you to compare them. They say 98% and it gives you some details I would have filled in when I added my face to the list. Under people frequency, I can actually see that this person, me, has been in there too often. So it brings up the frequency alarm as well, um, as well as all of the capture images along the bottom. So you can actually use this uh, live through a web browser interface. You can also do it through IMS 4200, uh, or you can use Hike Central or the local GUI, whichever really um, takes your preference. The web browser is just an additional function, really that gives it some more flexibility. Some people will use it, some people won't. Again, if you click on um, each image, it, it brings up a still of it. If I click on the faces there, so 27 faces recognized since I've run the display alarm. And if you click on settings, this is where you can uh, set the layout. So bottom bar display, so you can set your, your functionality of live view, face capture, people, uh, face frequency there, detect, what functions you're looking for, and then the alarm receiving points of the two cameras I'm using there. So I've got my already set it up, but you've set that up within the settings. And each time you open the display alarm, it will bring up this interface. Again, if you use it, great. If you don't, you don't have to use it. If I go through it again, go back to face, and we'll see another capture. Wait for the web browser to catch up. I can trigger a few. So some more have come through there. So it's caught up finally. And like you can see that one there, it hasn't recognized my like who I am. It's, I'm recognized as a stranger, so it's saying go away. Because um, that's a side profile shot, it, it just doesn't really know. But you can see there, click on that one, it's 99%. 99% sure that's me, which it is. So it just gives you some more flexibility, really. So I'm going to click off that to come back, go back to live view. Um, outside of that, that's all you need to know for the web browser. You'll see the video either side of this. So other than that, take care and see you next week for another how-to video. Thanks, guys.